Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for taking the time to visit today. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for this time together, and I pray that as we look into Colossians, that you will enlighten our minds and our hearts, that you'll open our eyes and our ears to the treasures in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I must confess in all transparency that I had a really difficult time doing the blog that I'm vlogging about today. I wrote it yesterday, and for some reason, I was just overwhelmed. When I started reading Colossians 3, it, it struck me like a mother sending her son off on a trip. Remember this, and oh, don't forget that. Then also, it's all so important. I figure I may be in this chapter for a while, so I had to focus. And Paul actually begins with talking about focus and talking about priorities. Life is like a huge banquet of food choices. I was into the food thing yesterday. Looks like I haven't left. We need to choose what we put on our plates. We had better choose well if we want to be healthy. And of course, this goes for both the physical and the spiritual realms. Our verses for today are Colossians 3, 1 through 3. And in the New English translation, they say, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Keep thinking about things above, not things on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Keep seeking the things that are above. Choose this. Don't choose that. Seek this. Don't seek that. Keep thinking about this, not about that. Olympians aren't the only ones who make critical choices all the time. All of us do. It's just that some of us choose better than others more often. It seems like every day we hear more and more stories of our fellow men and women who choose heartbreak. Perhaps that's why we love watching the Olympics so much. We get to watch these people who have made years and years and years of excellent choices about their sport and about their health and we're just in awe of their dedication and their perseverance and their talent. Wow. Paul shows us the motivation, though, for all of us to make holy choices in our Christian lives because we've made the choice to surrender to Christ's lordship, to live for him. That's a great first choice. But it involves dying to ourselves and Paul talks about this concept in many of his letters, not just here in Colossians 3. When we accept Jesus' offer of salvation, our lives are then hidden with Christ in God. Now, what does that mean? Verse 3 speaks of a finality, a done deal. Dying is pretty final. So when Paul uses the euphemism of dying to oneself, in one sense, it connotes a final transaction, forever sealed and sure. In another sense, though, Paul speaks of dying daily to the old nature's desires and wants. And this is why he admonishes the Colossians to dwell on, as it says in some translations, to dwell on righteous things. In another layer of meaning, I love how there's a layer of protection and safekeeping implied here. Not that God will protect his children from all pain or trouble or stress, but that in the final analysis, we are his and he is ours forever. One day when we move into his peace eternally, all such heartache will end. Well, the fact that Christians are hidden with Christ in God does not mean that we should hide our faith or 
only trotted out during trying circumstances. Jesus proclaimed that a city set on a hill cannot be hid. And if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit will most definitely shine forth through you. Currently, as I wrote this yesterday and as I'm recording this today, the 2016 Olympics are taking place with millions watching on television. And the first black American woman to win a gold medal for swimming is a Christian. She doesn't hide it either. When Simone Manuel won her Olympic spot, her spot on the Olympic team, after being deemed a long shot, she tweeted out on Twitter, quote, All glory to God. Isn't he awesome? End quote. And then when she won her meet yesterday, I believe it was, when she came up out of the water, her first words were, all glory to God. Other 2016 Olympians who are Christians and not shy about showing it include Maya Dorado, who said, quote, my faith frees me to dream big, end quote, and who also meddled for the United States a few days ago. And then there's David, I think it's pronounced Boudia, Boudia. I should have looked it up, I suppose, who is already a gold medal winner from 2012, but he won a silver medal a few days ago for synchronized diving. David has a book coming out soon. Listen to this title, Greater Than Gold, From Olympic Heartbreak to ultimate redemption. So all of these Christians are, they're like a city set on a hill and they're not hiding their faith. In fact, they're marvelous examples of not hiding one's faith, but instead living it out gloriously. Many in the world will say, how do they do it? What incredible force is at work in them to account for this seemingly superhuman performance. What is their secret? To that extent, the Christian's life is hidden with Christ in God. Jesus Christ, a relationship with him is the secret, the best secret, a secret that is better than gold. Let's pray. Father, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we strike gold at that moment. It's the best decision any of us could ever make. It doesn't guarantee gold medals in the Olympics, but what it does guarantee is the companionship of your Holy Spirit living inside each Christian. Your Holy Spirit who guides and directs and who gifts who gives tremendous gifts to each Christian that each person can use for your honor and for your glory, Heavenly Father. And I just thank you for these Christian Olympians who are using all the gifts that you have given them and giving you all the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, may we do the same as our brothers and sisters in Christ who are competing in the Olympics in this current day. Thank you for stopping by. If this vlog has blessed you, you can find more of them here at this YouTube channel, as well as other vlogs from other Christian vloggers, my friends, who have been led by the Holy Spirit to do this ministry. And I pray that you'll check them out as well. If you subscribe, you'll get to hear not only mine and see not only mine, but theirs as well. I'd love it if you'd reach out to me in my written blog. The address is on your screen. Or you can reach out to me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle is on the screen too. Come back again soon.